This is a new series being started called Gematriatic Geula Singularity. And it's being started on uh, in Hebrew, in Hebrew understanding, and the Hebrew understanding, the first day of the week is Sunday is the first day of the week, and it's the 24th day of Sivan in the year 5784, and it's the 30th day of June of 2024. And this series, is, the idea of it is to take a look at words and analyze them mathematically through a system, numerical analysis called gematria, and which is um, assigning a numerical value to, to words and phrases to gain understanding and gain meaning of them, to ask questions and to attempt to bring answers um, based on um, different analysis of, of, the, of, of the numerical values of the words. Um, the first, this first session um, will focus on a question that I've had for a, a very long time, and it has to do with pronunciation. Um, in Hebrew, there's this traditional or conventional uh, Hebrew Israeli pronunciation where the last letter of the olive bet uh, is tough and has a t uh, as a t sound. And if there's no dot in it, it doesn't matter. It's still a T sound. Um, for example, um, the word for commandment would be mitzvot. But there's another pronunciation, which is more of a European uh, Ashkenazic. Uh, you would, some of the groups that would be in this uh, would be the more yeshivish or litvish, uh, but generally European Ashkenazic uh, would have a an S sound to it. Like, for example, they wouldn't say mitzvot, they would say mitzvos. And so the question came to me, because when I first learned Hebrew, it was in the standard traditional way, where um, it would be when you said the blessing on the Torah, be notain ha-Torah, notain. But if you're in the more European, let's say Ashkenazic, Litvish type of world, you would say no sane. No sane ha Torah. And so I was wondering why that is. And uh, one general answer I got was, is that every letter has to be differentiated. And that didn't entirely satisfy me because there are certain letters that are still not differentiated, even with making that differentiation of a tough and a saw. For example, in the Hebrew alphabet, uh, alphabet the, the letter sin and the letter samach have the same sound. Now, shin is the, is the same letter as sin, but the word sin is used in certain words, and the letter Samach is used, and they have the same sound. So those are letters that are different, and they have the exact same sound. And so, gradually, I began to, when I really got deep into studying Gematria, um, which is the assignment of numerical values to words, and letters, words, phrases, and verses, um, to compare words one to another or contrast them, I began to slowly conclude that the reason for these pronunciations have significance when it comes to understanding words numerically. And an example came up today um, and to to start this example, just to, to give an introduction, there is a record in the Torah, in the book of Numbers, chapter 33, of all of the places that Israelites went 
after they left Egypt, before they entered the Promised Land, before they entered the land of Canaan, or now known as Israel, um, they went through a series of 42 journeys. And um, it was a study of mine to count them, which one was first, second, etc. And um, there's the commentators uh, give different lengths of time, which uh, the Israelites stayed at each location. And, and so I went through each one on, on a systematic basis. Every day I'd go through one journey. And um, someone, uh, I don't know the name of the author, but he made a book that paralleled the 42 words as a prayer called Anabakoach, uh, which is a Kabbalistic prayer that's said in, in many occasions. And it uh, has 42 words, just as there are 42 journeys. And someone in this book, the paralleled, uh, for instance, the first journey, let's say the first location was Ramses, Ramses, and then that would be Anna, and then Sukkot, or Sukkot, and then Bekoach, and, and so forth. And so I was studying in that way for a while, and this 19th journey is a place called, according to this, the order of this, the way they put it, and I think that's the order of the Book of Numbers, but I'm not exactly sure. But according to the, to the count that I saw in this book, um, the 19th location, the 19th journey is a place called Kehelata or Kehelasa. And this exact word um, is the word of today. And this word, uh, in, in my own counting, it, it came out to be today. And... This word brings up this very question, because if you were in the Sephardic or Israeli pronunciation, you would say kehelata. But if you were Ashkenazic, like Yeshivish, like European, Litvish kind of pronunciation, you would say kehelasa. So I still was wondering, like, what, like what, why? What, what, it, these are two different sounds. And so this conclusion that I came to... Um, it makes a difference when it comes to numerical and mathematical analysis through sound and through comparative, comparative languages. Here's the example. Kehela Sa, or Kehela Ta, has a regular Hebrew numerical value of 540. If Kuf is 100, He is 5, Lamed is 30, Taf is 400, and He is 5, it's four, that's 540. And you can say it kehelata or kehelasa. But going to the idea that Hebrew is a basis of many languages, I had that idea and someone actually mentioned, to me, mentioned it to me recently and I thought about it and I said, Where, what kind of English words could you find in Hebrew words? And I do that quite often. I look at words like, for example, Peirot. The Hebrew word peirot is very close to the English word fruit. It's almost the exact same word. Just phonetically, it's a little bit different, but the same consonants, the same. And so that's one example. But this word kehelata, now in English that wouldn't be anything, but if you said it in the Ashkenazic, like European kind of way, kehelasa, it would be very, it would, it would resemble a certain word. Kehelos, close, kehelasa. You have the K or the C, a hard C. You have the L and the S. And surprisingly, when I looked up the word close or close, it's spelled the same way as the word close. C L O S E. I would think that the first definition would be to to cover an opening. Close would be the main word. And that's where we got close from, because if something is, there's an enclosure, and it's and it's closed, then there's a narrow, there's not a lot of things that can get in. So there, therefore, if it's, if you're close to someone else, there's not a lot of space between. I thought that, that close would be the first 
the verb to close would be the first definition, but what I saw, and it really doesn't matter which one's first because they're both related anyway, so it's, but it listed near, nearness, the, the synonym of nearness to be first, which I found to be very interesting. And if you analyze the word close, close, in English gematria, that means A is 1, B is 2, C is 3. If you do that, that means C is 3, L is 12, O is 15, S is 19, and E is 5. That comes to 54. Now, the word, the gematria of the word kehela sa is 540. Now, 540 and 54 are very easily relatable. You can see the connection. They're basically the same number. One is that and one times 10. It's much closer, no pun intended, than, let's say, 37 and 533. If I see 54 and I see 540, they look very, look similar. And so this happens only if you use the Ashkenazic pronunciation. If you use it, Kehela Sa, that would give you close, and close would give you 540, 54, I'm sorry. But if you, if, if you did the Hebrew like clote, let's say the English would be clote. But it's not. But let's say it was quote, it would be 55. It wouldn't exactly match it. So we see from this that there is a, a very important, meaningful reason for the Ashkenazic European way that they say, like, no seina Torah, no seina mitzvos, matzos, she mitzvos matzos. You know, it's, it's like there's the, um, I've heard that the, uh, you know, the, the Sephardic. Israelis really say that they're mispronouncing it, but it, according to an understanding and analysis of of language, there actually is a, a an important purpose for it. And this uh, would be the first session of the the gematriatic geula singularity or the gematriatic redemption singularity, analyzing numbers gematriatically with the purpose of revealing the redemption.